Tanix on the Koji. Yeah, not too surprised to see Blaze on the brand at the very least. Has been playing it throughout today and, of course, not going to start off with anything different. On the other side, Tinix on the Koji. Koji's been getting a lot of love lately. Again, these bows are becoming more and more popular, but Blaze is chopping up already. Now we are here on the Mammoth Fortress. Blaze opening up really strong. Already has Tinix in the orange. Nice little Nair coming out from Tinix, trying to control the ground maybe a little bit. You don't see him going very high. Maybe one jump height, the middle platform comes to... Uh, that stop right there, and he's able to go up to that. But other than that, we don't see him spending too much time in the air. Maybe a jump or two, but he's quickly back down on the ground with a fast fall. Now is completely disarmed, gets hit by a ground pound. Blaze goes back over, takes the easy way out on that one. Great choice from Blaze. You saw him make the move, but he didn't actually commit anything with any type of recovery frames or anything like that. It was just movement over there to put the threat out, and then back over to the wall, cleaned it up with a ground pound real easy. Yeah, I love that edge guard from Blaze just a moment ago where he was sitting right next to Tinix, ready to threaten if Tinix made the wrong option, but ended up still having the secure. Now we're on to the second stock of Tinix and Blaze continuing this pressure. The axe just chopping away. Yeah, both players are in the orange right now, so Blaze has a huge lead up on Tinix. See Tinix over on the wall. They now have swapped places completely. There is a weapon spawn on the stage. Neither player has really made too much of a move. The backside oh, the of that recovery is going to oh. hit. And Blaze actually is going to make a full commitment that game, including his own dodge by burning it to use that gravity cancel. Yeah, really good edge guard from Blaze, showing why he's the favorite in this set. Tinix is going to need something big if he wants to deny the three stock because Blaze is just chopping. But there's that recovery, able to at least get a stock off of Blaze. And this could be really tough for Tenix going into this one because you're already not favored in terms of PR, in terms of seed, in terms of pass placements, all of that. But then now you are a full stock behind in just game one. Sometimes your game ones for your sort of lesser ranked players, like that's where you can go out, maybe hit them with something they're not ready yeah. for and take game one before you end up losing three in a row. So this is going to be really tough for Tenix to fight back from, not just in terms of skill and rankings, but also the mental of already getting chopped up. Game one has plays in the orange, so it's making a comeback, but it's not going to take too much, especially with this axe coming out. Neutral light from the middle of the stage, not quite off screen nice just there. yet, Woo. but there is a follow-up. I love the offstage follow-ups from Blaze. First it was the sh movement, then back over touching the wall, being safe with the ground pound for the KO. Then he actually went in, burned a dodge for a gravity cancel, and then we see him doing that again. So comfortable offstage, but in the beginning, he was cautious, but still had control of the situation. Yeah, he's playing these edge guards so incredibly smart, just able to get that one hit that he needs. Nothing too obscene. He's just going out there, getting what he needs, and then going on with his day. Really good edge guarding from Blaze leading to these knockouts. And a lot of it has been like he gets it with the axe, starts it off, but then it's finished off with unarmed for two of them and spear for the first one. Now they moved on pretty quickly to this next one. Both players wanted to get into it. Blaze not having to really do anything on that character select screen other than lock in the exact same Brin that we saw. But Tenix is making the move over onto the Bode Bar, away from the Koji, keeping the sword, but changing out the bow for a hammer. Ooh, really good start for Blaze. Seeing oh. that spear come alive. Didn't get the second pogo, though. Would have been real nice for him, that extra damage. And of course, keeping Tinix on that edge. But now we're back onto the main stage. Still Tinix not finding any hits. Going to swap over to the hammer. Still yet to throw out much. Threw out a sideline, but Blaze with the punish. And Blaze might get a stock before even hitting into the orange. Yes, he will. That is 40 seconds, Blaze. Already got a stock on that one. Last game, the beginning of it was like cautious but controlled. This game, he has like full control of everything going on. He was missing like a lot of moves on his spear yeah. on the first stock of Tenix, but Tenix had absolutely nothing. That's why you don't see Blaze up in the top right in orange, in red, anywhere near that. So the punish game from Tenix was just completely off in the first part of this game. Blaze in complete control. Yeah, Blaze looking real good to take this with a clean 3-0 in the top, in the loser's top eight. But a nice clap back from Tenix, starting to get some damage built up. But again, Blaze just immediately returning fire. Tenix really struggling to find any momentum. He has Blaze in the orange. You see him just, again, staying very grounded. It's like he won't make the move over to Blaze. Maybe a little cautious here. Of course, the threat of that axe downline makes it hard to make an arrow approach. Does get the downline side air, doesn't hit the weapon toss. Down air, still needs to keep it going. Nice gravity cancel side light to guarantee the knockout. 
That was a good answer back. Even had uh, a little bit of the gravity cancel coming out there. So not being afraid to risk that one to secure the kill. Blaze with an interesting choice there. That might have actually led to the KO if he hit the recovery afterward. Goes for the sideline, then the turnaround, trying to get behind him really where Tenix was moving away from him too with the recovery. Blaze feeling a little confident here. Might be going a little too close to the sun with the way that he's playing. Just a moment ago, he was going for that second recovery, and Tinix was just barely off the mark with that down air, which could have been a big reversal opportunity. Now, I could be telling tales out of school, but I'm sure someone will correct me on Twitter, <laughs> at who is Sparky. But I feel like Blaze uses Spear Ground Pound more than a lot of other players, and Tinix actually, throughout that stock, has now regained control of it. Might be telling tales out of school. That's the thing people say. That's that's a phrase. Everyone knows this phrase. We I might this. be kissing frogs by the lake. That's that's definitely not a phrase. Meanwhile, Blaze is now behind. Has Tinix in the red though, and Tinix just adding up more damage, just taking this lead away from him. Really coming alive on this second stock. Kind of a second stock Samuel is what they would call him as Blaze is disarmed. Weapons punish. comes in. He punishes the neutral signature. Tenix got a little bit confident there. Thought he could throw out the neutral signature. Grabbing the read on where that weapon spawn was coming in maybe. But he ended up getting punished for it. Blaze found that one pretty easily. That is definitely not the most safe signature that Bodbar has this yeah. game. Definitely a lot of active frames on that one. And the way that Blaze was positioned clean movement to the other side, but he's still behind and one more hammer move from Tinix could give him game number two. Now I do worry a little bit. Okay, he does actually clean it up there with the cider. I thought the bounce might not actually yeah. lead to the win, but I was a little bit worried when I saw the neutral signature on sword and then another neutral signature right after that on the hammer. Like he was almost fishing for sort of the quote unquote like easy knockout option. Like, oh, he's in red. It's time for me to hit my signature finishing yeah. move. So it was, it was a little bit worrisome because you don't see too much of that, especially coming from like EU boat bars. That's sort of like, I don't want to, I don't want to diss Tenix. <laughs> I, really, I really don't want to, but that's like a plat mentality or like a low diamond mentality. So you don't see that from the rest of his play at all during this set. But he did a fantastic job of coming back in that second stock. I really do want to point that out. It yeah, is 1-1 one, one sure. in this set. That last game was looking like a Blaze game. He was running away with it, and then Tinix on that second stock, like you said, second stock Samuel, ended up cleaning that up, getting that lead, getting that W. And now we're here in game number three. Blaze giving a little bit more respect. D-Light into the recovery. Good decision making. Going for the closer kill box. Went vertical with that one, and will take the lead. So it's interesting that Blaze keeps like opening up these stocks with really fantastic spear play and like getting these stocks and then just swaps over to the axe. And at least last game, he started to really fall behind on that second stock of Tenix once he really swapped over to the axe. So I'm not sure really what his thought process is on what weapon. Never mind. I know what his thought process is. He's going to pick up the axe and he's going to start swinging with it and it's going to work. Game three, Blaze is actually nasty on it. No thoughts, just Axe, and he is chunking again onto Tinix. Blaze's Axe looking so good, but he decided he wants to play the spear game on this final stock of Tinix here in game number three. See how well it works out for him, as right now Tinix is finding hits. Has the hammer in hand. That's where he found some momentum before. That's going to send Blaze off stage, but here comes that recovery. Blaze being a little bit safe with it. You see him fading back with those neutral airs. So he can put something in front of him, but he doesn't fully commit by just launching his, hot, uh, his hurt box forward as sort of a W key player. Yeah, not just running forward, trying to find the hits he can get. Blaze with some good nares, though. Really stopping that momentum, controlling some space with that big circle. Tinix off the bounce, not going to lead to the knockout. Gravity gets the sideline, not going to work out this time. That's all his movement, and that's a three stock for Blaze. Huge answer back. Absolutely massive. Look at the damage that Tenix was relegated to. 161. That is barely turning Blaze red. I mean, you saw that reflected on his health bar. He was like one hit past red the entire game. And then he finds a KO there to clean that one up. 84 average damage per engagement, dude. That's big. That's big damage. 51% accuracy. He was getting those hits, was not missing. And that is rough for Tinix because now Tinix is one game away from getting knocked out of the bracket going home with a tie for seventh place. We'll see what Tinix has for us in his pocket. Is he still going to go with the Bodvar? Because it certainly didn't work that game. Blaze absolutely manhandled him. And we're seeing the swap over to Olgrim. It is a macho man coming out for Tinix. Macho Man Randy Savage will be able to go axe to axe against Blaze. We'll have this Lance, but 
How well did the lands work out? Okay, it's working great. Already starting off with the three piece. Another three oh, piece goodness. coming out from Tinix. Okay. Where was this macho man? I apologize to all the headphones users out there because we're getting a lot of Lance sounds. <laughs> the classic Lance being louder than every other weapon. Good damage though in favor of Tinix so far. Blaze though, starting to regroup, playing that grounded game, hitting those down lights. But Tinix with the side air puts Blaze off screen. Blaze in trouble, but he gets back to the wall. Now Tinix does not have hardly any Lance legends in like his top played legends. According to Korhala, I'm scrolling down and I'm like, I'm seeing basically nothing. Like Artemis is one of his highest ones and that is at like a level 33. So you see the immediate flurry of Lance coming out. It's working for him so far. Fortunately, he couldn't find that non-true combo option with the sidelight into the recovery for the KO. But his Lance is looking really confident. Yeah, good side air from Tinix. Will give him the first stock in a... I have to believe that this was a very direct, like, this is what I want to play against Blaze. Like, when you have a character that is not high experience, but just uh, high damage output, it means you're you're doing it specifically as a counter. His Ulgrim is level 26. Okay. Like, he just yeah. unlocked the black color <laughs> You probably did that today. Yeah, that might have been <laughs> this morning. I don't even think like any of the suede that's on that black color skin, I don't even think any of that is scratched yet. That is absolutely brand new. Fresh out the box, but getting some good damage built up on the Blaze's second stock. Blaze did a good job evening this one up, but again, Tinix just getting that extra credit, getting those swings on the Blaze. The juggle potential from Tinix is looking pretty good. Nice neutral light. Oh, this is bad. Though. Unable to land these. there, yeah. Could not find a landing for a while there, and it gave uh, a lot of damage to Blaze. Tennis going high in the air for that one. Blaze waiting as long as he can before he lands down on the platform. Eats a side air. Tenix with a solid lead here. Complete control of the weapons for Tenix. Going to, of course, go back to that Lance. Even that one he's tossing up. So weapon advantage is a big priority for Tenix. Unfortunately for Tenix fans out there, Blaze is able to grab that axe pretty quickly. He's adding up some good damage here. You know he wants to find the side air, but he just can't quite find the positioning for it. Yeah, this is a tough spot for Blaze because Tenix is also hitting side airs, and those Lance side airs have a little bit more priority. Dare will launch him, but still not enough. Blaze yet to throw out a signature to be completely honest like he is very restricted in his uh, play but he's gonna get the side air for the knockout didn't take too much damage on this final stock he's gonna have his choice of weapons and he's going over to the axe tenix see him going high hoping he can grab a weapon spawn like right as it comes in on frame one when he sees that glow there one is he wasn't able to grab it in time but he's able to move over to it but you didn't see blaze really move to the right he just kind of stayed right above on the left side where tenix Go. was this is bad. Offstage engagement. That is an orange KO, and Blaze is going to take that set after a lightning start for Tenix. But the set goes to Blaze, 3-1. It was so close to getting it to game number five. The Lance play so strong from Tenix, but just right on that final stock. It's like you were kind of trying to point out is that Blaze was like, all right, I'm going to let you get that Lance. I don't care because I have the perfect counter with my axe play and was able to take it out. But a close one, you can see how similar those damage numbers are. 39 versus 33 on the average per engagement. Now, one thing I did want to mention is, uh, you remember Magimind, right? Yeah. Who won the EU Arcadian uh -huh. like just a week ago. Yeah. Magimind did hit me up.